Hi everybody, I am going to talk about the role of social work in the field of disabilities. Working with persons with disabilities can be an extremely rewarding area of work which involves supporting disabled people to lead fuller or independent lives, to take up education and employment opportunities and to contribute to their communities. People who have mental or physical disabilities often face a unique set of challenges in their everyday life. The challenges individuals with disabilities face largely depend on their specific impairments as well as their severity. At the end of this talk, you will understand the relevance of social work practice in the field of disabilities, know the different social work perspectives in working with the disabled people, learn the methods of working with the disabled and gain adequate knowledge about the role of a social worker. Let me explain the relevance of social work in the field of disabilities. People with disabilities and handicaps have the same needs as others. They need friendship, a satisfying job, adequate income, recreation and comfortable housing. Unfortunately, the prevailing social attitude towards them is unhealthy. This stems from the stigma attached to the family with a disabled member. Some families do not have the love and patience needed for such a person. Originally, a disabled person is the sole responsibility of the family. Now, government recognizes the rights of the disabled and makes efforts to give formal and non-formal education programs for them. Professional social work is based on problem solving and change management. Social workers make use of a variety of skills, techniques and activities consistent with a holistic focus on disabled individuals and their environment. The aim of social worker is to work in partnership with the service users, families, caregivers, staff and service providers to identify needs, provide practical and emotional support and empower the disabled persons and their families to enhance their quality of life. Social work bases its intervention on a systematic body of evidence-based knowledge and practice. The primary area of social work intervention is the therapeutic work. Different therapeutic methods can be used by social workers such as casework, meditation, counseling, group work, crisis intervention, family therapy and so on. Social workers work with individuals with a disability families and communities. Their work encompasses direct practice, group work, community development, policy change, research and advocacy. They can play a key role in the development of anti-discrimination legislation, policies that support persons with a disability and the development of disability programs. Social workers work alongside people with disabilities and families to realize social inclusion, community living, employment, family support and rehabilitation. Social work theory and practice in the field of disability has been greatly influenced by values and philosophy of the independent living movement. This movement has shifted practice from creation of clients dependent on service controlled by professionals to work in partnership with the disabled people 
to secure their rights as equal citizens of the country. Let me highlight the perspectives of social work on persons with a disability. The dominant view of disability in social work has been the medical model which considers disability as a functional limitation as an individual problem or pathology or dysfunction or deviance. The medical model locates the problem of disability within the individual and considers functional limitations or psychological losses to arise naturally from the individual deficit. This view is also called the personal tragedy theory of disability which posits that disability is a natural disadvantage suffered by disabled individuals when placed in competitive social situations. Instead of viewing disability as inextricably linked to social, cultural and political milieu, the medical or personal tragedy framework infers that the disabled individual is plagued by deficits and is in need of medical fixing. Social work also addresses the issue of grief, loss and bereavement associated with mental and physical disability. Recognizing, accepting and coming to terms with the disability are viewed as a targeted outcomes of social work intervention. Social work has also addressed disability from an ecological or psychosocial perspective. It underlines the importance of extending the medical perspective of disability to social factors such as stigma, architecture and awareness of a social structure constructed by the able-bodied people. Under this framework, the extent of disability is reciprocally determined by transactions between the persons and their environments rather than within the individual alone. Social workers have indeed articulated the importance of inclusion and accommodation for individuals with disabilities. In recent decades, social work has moved towards empowerment, strengths and resilience perspectives. It has adopted the empowerment framework which concerns itself with the increase in the social, economic and political influence of the disabled persons in relation to the privileged sections of society. In recent decades, the empowerment perspective has encouraged social workers to develop collaboration with the disabled people living in poverty and isolation. Nevertheless, the empowerment theory has had very limited impact on the life of the people with disabilities who are more affected by the mainstream medical model than other vulnerable populations. Let me discuss about the shift of focus of social work intervention with reference to the disabled. The focus of the social work intervention is on the strengths of the persons with a disability such as talents, capacities, knowledge and resources which exist in the individuals and communities. With regard to disability, strength perspective takes a view that disability is an opportunity for growth. Interventions with the disabled attempt to take into account their abilities instead of disabilities in service planning, delivery and assessment. The resiliency model upholds the inherent strengths in individuals and families who have overcome environmental, social and personal barriers despite stigma and discrimination. However, the resiliency perspective poses a danger in that people with disability who overcome their disability are seen as disabled heroes. While disabled heroes can be inspiring to people with disabilities, 
and comforting to the able-bodied, they may perpetuate the false notion that anyone can overcome the disability and accomplish unusual feats. Many of the disabled heroes have exceptional social, economic and physical resources that most people with disabilities do not have access to. Although empowerment, strength and resiliency perspectives have advanced the field of social work in the direction of its core mission, yet no social work perspective to date has the transformational power to change social and individual views about disability. None of these perspectives has incorporated the notion that disability must be redefined to sever its socially constructed link with the functional impairment and subsequently with the discrimination. On the whole, despite the positive developments in social work intervention, the profession has done very little to promote the rights of the persons with a disability. Moreover, social work literature, research and practice on disabilities have lagged behind other topical areas dealing with oppressed groups. Notwithstanding the move towards ecological empowerment and strength perspective in social work intervention, the impact of the medical model of disability is evident in policy making and research which is synonymous with a lack of consultation with the people having disability, the lack of emphasis on the social and political forces impacting the lives of people with a disability and a reduction of disability to simplistic objective criteria that measure functional limitations. The more the disability policies rely on disability as individual problem framework, the more they marginalize the possibility of enabling methods of well-being of the disabled people that are based on participation, social integration and equal citizenship. Let me discuss the role of social workers in the field of disability. Most often, social workers are the only members of rehabilitation teams who have the knowledge and responsibility to focus on the social life and needs of persons with a disability. Therefore, it is incumbent on social workers to help the teams recognize this new definition of social independence and the person's self-determination. Social workers need to be attuned to the new realities of life with a disability which make it far less restrictive and offer the disabled more options than were available in the past. Overemphasis on dealing with fears about life with a disability and heroic efforts to restore normal functioning are often perceived by the disability rights community as misguided. They contend that such forms of practice are based on stereotypes on overly gloomy visions about what life with a disability will be like or visions of life in institutionalized settings. Most of the general public is probably unaware that many people with a disability are now able to live and work in mainstream communities and form meaningful social relationships in spite of severe disabilities. Social workers need to become familiar with such examples and be able to communicate this perspective or even connect newly impaired persons with such individuals so that these persons and their families may become aware of life that can be full and meaningful even with the acquisition of a severe impairment. Social workers need to play another important role in helping both the rehabilitation team and the disabled person with the process associated with shifting the decision-making power from the professionals to the person. 
In the context of the disability rights perspective, social workers need to promote rights-based approach in the field of working with the disabled persons. They should understand the new perspectives that are now embraced by the disability rights movement. They must become well informed about the rights-based approach and have their consciousness raised. They can play the role of an intermediary between health service professionals and organizations and the disabled people they seek to serve in order to achieve the movement's goals for empowerment, self-determination and social integration of the disabled people at the community level. It is important to recognize that up to now the disability rights movement has largely been a self-help movement and sometimes it has taken on an adversarial role towards professionals whom they have not seen to be particularly supportive. It may be incumbent therefore for social workers to demonstrate to such groups that they have valuable skills and knowledge that can be beneficial to their purposes. They can help the persons with a disability to function independently, foster their empowerment, provide leadership in their areas of expertise without dominance, arrange relevant services, organize advocacy programs and provide training. As social workers take to rights-based approach for the disabled community, their role as educator and advocate becomes very pronounced and valuable. This does imply that community organizing, administrative practices, case management and advocacy skills may take on heightened importance in working effectively with the disabled. Let me describe the responsibility of social worker in empowering people with disabilities. Effective social work practice with people with disabilities requires a refocused conceptual framework that will support and promote self-determination. This framework must be designed to enable people with disabilities to expand their range of options and choices, prepare them to be more effective in dealings with professionals and bureaucrats who often do not understand nor appreciate their heightened need for self-determination and mobilize and help groups of people with disabilities to consider policy and program alternatives that can improve their situation. Social workers' direct intervention with the disabled persons will certainly consist of the primary activity of health and rehabilitation. However, this intervention must increasingly emphasize the empowerment objectives rather than mere compliance with the medically prescribed treatment plans and or the traditional psychosocial clinical interventions. Fostering the independence and empowerment of people with disabilities requires enabling them to become motivated and skilled at helping themselves. There are four psychological changes that are particularly important in empowering the persons with a disability. They are self-efficacy, group consciousness, reduction of self-blame, and assuming personal responsibility for change. Let me describe each of these changes. Self-efficacy refers to the belief that one's actions can produce desired changes. Group consciousness means the identification as a member of your class and recognition of how political, social and physical structures affect the class. Reduction of self-blame refers to the receding feeling of responsibility for the negative consequences of being a member of this class. And Assuming personal responsibility for change means that a person is prepared to take steps to improve his or her own situation. Social workers need to focus more on helping the persons to accomplish these 
person in context changes. They should converse with the disabled persons about power and conflict, encourage them to challenge preconceived notions and work to unleash their potential. Let me discuss about the methods of social work in the field of disability. First, the casework method. The casework method is a primary method of social work practice that involves a process of one-to-one -one relationship that helps the individual in effecting better adjustment in his or her family and social milieu. The major task of the professional is, therefore, to adjust the individual to his or her own particular disability. There are two aspects of this. One, there is physical adjustment through rehabilitation programs designed to return the individual to as near normal a state as possible. And two, there is psychological adjustment which helps the individual to come to terms with his or her physical limitations. Therefore, the switch from an individual to a social model of disability does not signify the end of casework, but it views casework as one of the range of options for skilled intervention. It does not either deny that some people may grieve or mourn for their lost able body, but suggests that such a view should not dominate the social worker's assessment of what the problem may be. Thus, grief or bereavement counseling may be appropriate in some instances. Some disabled people, particularly those suffering from progressive diseases, may need long-term support that only a casework relationship can provide and the whole family may indeed become the target for casework intervention. Second, group work. Group work need not focus solely on the need to create a therapeutic atmosphere in which individuals or families can come to terms with the disability. Groups can also be used to pool information on particular benefits, knowledge on where and how to get particular services, and even on a self-help basis to give individuals the confidence to assert that their disability does not stem from their physical impairment, but from the way society often excludes them from everyday life. In addition, the group can be used as a major means of giving back responsibility for their own lives. Meetings in the small groups serve as a forum for the workers and the disabled persons to plan their activities and to decide their priorities. Third, community organization. The potential for intervention using community organization method is also exciting. There have already been a number of local access groups which focus on the way the physical environment disables people and numerous access reports and guides have been produced. A few community workers have organized forum meetings of all organizations for the disabled people in a particular locality and these meetings in the community have proved useful in ensuring that the needs of disabled people are taken into account. And if the definition of community is expanded beyond its strictly geographical meaning to take in the idea of moral communities or psychic communities, then it is possible to see community organization methods being used in disability organizations. For example, the Spinal Injuries Association is currently employing a welfare officer whose job is one of enabling its members to work out their own problems and solutions by utilizing the collective wisdom and experience of its 3,000 paraplegic members through mutual support, peer counseling, and the provision of information and advice. Let me discuss about the role of caseworker in community-based rehabilitation programs. 
Community based rehabilitation is a strategy for enhancing the quality of life for the disabled people by improving service delivery, by providing more equitable opportunities, and by promoting and protecting their human rights. It may be also defined as a strategy within community development for the rehabilitation, equalization of opportunities, and social integration of all people with disabilities. Social workers are involved in community-based rehabilitation, which is implemented through joint efforts between people with disabilities, their families, and communities, and the appropriate health education, vocational, and social services. In the history of social services in India, no other concept has become as popular in such a short time as the community-based rehabilitation. The success of the community-based rehabilitation lies in encouraging people with disabilities, their families, and the local community to join in this program. It is very appropriate in the Indian cultural setting where social and community bonds are quite strong and deep-rooted. In this context, the challenge of the social worker is to harness the potential of these bonds for rehabilitation-related social action programs. The emerging view today is that community-based rehabilitation programs need to draw their resources from the existing community development programs and should integrate with them. Let me sum up. Professional social work is based on problem solving and change management. Social worker makes use of a variety of skills, techniques, and activities consistent with their holistic focus on the disabled individuals and their environment. The dominant view of disability in social work has been the medical model which considers disability as a functional limitation as an individual problem or pathology or dysfunction or deviance. In the context of the disability rights perspective, social workers need to promote rights-based approach in the field of working with the disabled persons. They should understand the new perspectives that are now embraced by the disability rights movement. Social work intervention must increasingly emphasize the empowerment objectives rather than mere compliance with medically prescribed treatment plans and or the traditional psychosocial clinical interventions. Social worker is involved in community-based rehabilitation which is implemented with the joint efforts between people with disabilities, their families and communities, and the appropriate health, education, vocational, and social services. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.